curious. Which of us is your favourite version of Spider-Man? There are almost as many versions of Spider-Man as there are superheroes in the whole of the DC and Marvel universes. But we all have a few things in common. We all have spider powers and we are all completely human. Despite our spider sense and our super strength and our ability to sling webs and climb walls, we are all still fully human. We have doubts, we feel pain, we have times when we feel afraid. Every spider hero, from Peter Parker to Miles Morales to me, Gwen Stacy makes mistakes. And we always struggle to get over those mistakes. Just like you, a few weeks ago, we started a new series asking questions about Jesus. We talked about the things that make us curious. And we started with the question, who is Jesus? As Peter proclaimed in the story a few weeks ago, Jesus is God's son. He is the promised savior who came to us to save us from sin. It's easy to hear the answer to that question and think of Jesus as some sort of untouchable superhero. Jesus was God. He was all powerful. He did miracles. How could Jesus possibly relate to a kid like me who makes mistakes, who feels sadness, who feels afraid? If you're curious, whether Jesus had real problems or not, I can assure you, he did. Jesus experienced everything we do, from a scraped knee to a broken heart. The Bible records many of Jesus' most human moments. So we can know we're not dealing with some sort of superhuman personality. Let us look at the time Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Hey there, it's me, the devil. My main purpose since being thrown out of heaven is to make everyone on earth, including Jesus when he was here, to do bad things so that they will be forever sad and miss out on going to heaven. I mean, if I cannot go there, then why should you? So, I tempted Jesus. I waited until he was weak. You see, he hadn't eaten for 40 days and 40 nights straight. I could hear his tummy rumbling from a mile away. Could you imagine how hungry he was? And tired too. Sounds pretty human to me. So, I asked him, if you are really the son of God, tell these rocks to become bread. And Jesus replied to me and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by everything the Lord says. Then I led him up onto the very highest point of the temple in Jerusalem and said, if you really are the son of God, jump off. As I reminded him that it also says in scripture, he has put his angels in charge of you and he will catch you with their hands and you will not hit your foot on a rock. Jesus then reminded me that it also says in scripture not to tempt the Lord your God. But I tried to tempt Jesus yet again. This time, I led him to the top of a mountain. 
I offered him all the great things in all the kingdoms of the world. If he would just bow down to me and worship me. He was such hard work. Eventually, Jesus told me to go away. So I left him and his angels came to help him. You can't help but just admire Jesus' strength. Now, let's skip ahead to the night Jesus was betrayed and see how he handled his last few hours of freedom. In the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus went with his disciples to pray, he relied on his friends for support. He felt sad and asked them to watch with him, but they slept. Jesus was afraid as he knew he was about to be betrayed, abandoned and rejected. He knew he was going to suffer unbelievable agony. Jesus went through it all for us because he knew it was God's plan. But he begged his heavenly father for another way. If Jesus didn't feel pain, why would he even ask God to make another way to save the world? Jesus knew all the emotions. He felt grief when his friend Lazarus died. He felt frustrated when the Pharisees refused to listen to his teachings. He felt deep sadness when Judas betrayed him. He felt loneliness when all but one of his disciples abandoned him. Jesus was fully human. He knew all your pain, your fear, your frustration and your sadness too. And through it all, he was still God's son and he never sinned, no matter how hard I tried to get him to. This has been me, Diana, your Bricks Kids Story presenter. Until next time.